Thank you so much for another day, another um, evening to worship you and, and discuss your word and, and, and uh, get some understanding. Uh, we ask you to speak to us all. To, uh, we ask you to speak to us and give us all understanding. I ask you to to, um, to use my lips and everybody else's, whoever wants to participate uh, on this on this um, call to uh, get better understanding of your word father we want your understanding the, that you want the way that you want us to understand and go forth father don't let it be uh, a situation where we're creating our own understanding we're trying to push that forth father we want your understanding the way that you mean us to understand your word and, and carry out uh carry out your mission so please give us understanding on that um, we have, we repent for our sins, our many, many, many sins, Father, those that we know of and those that we don't. Um, and we ask you to forgive us uh, in your name. We ask you to forgive us. Um, I, again, we uh, also ask you to help us through our daily trials. We ask you to heal our bodies, Father. Um, give us all better health. Uh, we know that, you know, this food system here. It's just getting worse and worse. A lot of different chemicals and drugs are in these different foods, and um, they're addictive in the wrong, in the, in the in a terrible way, and they're trying to take us out. Uh, but Father, you want us, you want a life for us, and in life everlasting. So help us to walk toward that instead of walking toward the ways of this nation and the uh, and the habits of this nation. Uh, we ask you to restore our health, to get rid of any uh, ailments we have. We we pray for uh, Sister Dion as well. That um, I already know that you are healing her, and we ask you to uh, to speed up her healing, Father, so she can give you a testimony uh, and be a great instrument. Uh, toward getting people towards your kingdom. Um, we also ask you to help us all out financially, opportunity-wise, and we ask you for your protection and your provision as well. And of course, to continue to, to um, awaken your people, Israel, and all of those Gentiles uh, that want to join into your covenant and recognize who you are and who we are. Uh, in Yahweh Shah's name, we do ask and pray these things. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. All right, are y'all right? So we're going to jump right in to some scriptures. We're going straight to a scripture. We're going to go to John 314, everybody's favorite. John 314 through 16. Okay. All right, can y'all uh, can y'all see my screen okay? Uh -huh. All right, cool. Let's get um let's go ahead and get John uh 314 through 16. Whoever wants to grab it. I'll go. I'll take it first. Okay. Just got it. Okay. okay, thank you. Okay, this is the book of John, chapter 3, verse 14. And Moses, and as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's a mighty scripture indeed. And, um, you know, we're, we're familiar with that. And, uh, and people, even of other beliefs, <laughs> uh, even they know that scripture, they just don't understand it correctly. Uh, so we want to, we, we're going to meditate on that on uh, on that scripture and we're gonna hopefully gain some gain a deeper understanding of it as we progress through this lesson so let's just keep that in our mind as we uh move it forward um so we're just going to keep that whole thing in mind right there john 3 14 through 16 and we will be coming back to it but let's just keep it in our keep that in our mind uh, we're going to go to luke 8 uh and 43 luke 8 and 43 Jumping right into the scriptures, Luke eight and forty three. We're going to go through, uh, go to forty eight. Luke eight and forty three through forty eight. Okay, I'll grab. And a woman, right. it's like a, and a woman having an issue of blood twelve years, which had spent all her living upon physicians, neither could be healed of any. And Yahushua said, "Who?" Wait, do wait. You want me to read 
I'm sc- oh, my bad. Came behind him and touched the borders of his garment and immediately her issue of blood staunched. And Yahusha said, Who touched me? When all denied Peter and they that were with him said, Master, the multitude thronged thee and pressed thee and sayest thou who touched me. And Yahusha said, Somebody have touched me for I have perceived that virtue is gone out of me. And when the woman saw that she was not hid, she came trembling and falling down before him. She declared unto him before all the people for what cause she had touched him and how she was healed immediately. And he said unto her, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith have made thee whole. Go in peace. So uh, again, we're, we're most of us are probably familiar with uh, with that situation. You know, uh, the woman with an issue of blood touched his garment, and she was healed. But the curious part, excuse me, uh, the curious part is um, verse forty six. It says, "And Yahweh shall say, somebody hath touched me, for I perceive that virtue is gone out of me." What, is, what does that mean? Does that mean that virtue is gone out of me? Anybody know? It's all cool. Look, because we're gonna look it up. <laughs> I'm doing that right now. <laughs> I'm trying to be <laughs> slick. <laughs> what was the question? What what is what is virtue? Yeah, yeah. I perceive that virtue is gone out of me. The virtue that's that's the, the power of the anointing that was on him. Con, con, con. Uh so we're gonna look that up right here in the blue letter, right here. That's gonna be just as as IQ said, virtue. So we're going to go through G, go to uh, G1411. And we see that, uh, let's, just, let's see if I can get a smaller, as long as can come up. All right. Okay. So, <laughs> excuse me, just as IQ said, uh, virtue indeed actually means, in, in this biblical sense, strength, power, ability inherent power, power residing in a thing by virtue of its nature or which a person or thing exerts and puts forth, exerts and puts forth powerful performing miracles, moral power and excellence of soul, the power and influence which belong to riches and wealth, power and resources arising from numbers, power consisting uh, uh, consisting in or resting upon armies, forces or hosts. So just like IQ said, Yahweh is saying that he felt power uh, go out of him. Uh, so again, power, as it says right here uh, in, uh, in the first portion of it, um, inherent power, power residing in the thing by virtue of his nature or which a person or thing exerts or puts forth. So that's very, 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 very important. So power came out of it, out of him and he knew it. So that means a piece of him or or some of his energy left his body and he was aware of it uh and uh he he didn't uh even decide to do that act like he didn't um he didn't he didn't uh see the woman and and uh and purposely go and heal her or intentionally go and heal her uh but within him it's it's uh it's almost like it's almost like it's a preset if uh when when an israelite has faith in him uh he will give himself to meet that Israelites need, uh, and this is what happens in that situation. She she has such great uh, great faith uh, that just touching her because it was in her mind that if I just touch his garment, I'm going to be healed. She touched his his his, uh, his fringes, and that's exactly what happened. So it certainly seemed like that was the situation. Like um, um, that 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 um, it was just almost like a preset that faith brought on that healing. Absolutely. And um, and uh, as you said, that faith is extremely important. Hopefully all of us know that that it's, it's extremely important. Uh, like I said, to the point where it's almost like a preset that that faith being so strong, it's almost like he couldn't help but heal her. He didn't even make a decision to, 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 to do it. Uh, it just it, it just uh, he just gave of himself that power, he, that power, that virtue, that power he gave of her uh, of himself. Uh, just based on that faith. And it certainly seemed like, again, it was like a preset uh, type of thing for that situation. Uh, So again, we're locking in on the fact that he gave of himself. 
Uh, let's take a look at something real quick. Uh, let me see. I didn't want to cooperate. All right, here we go. Do you think that there is a price to protecting your peace? If so, what is it? The price is the work that it costs to protect it. You know what I'm saying? Like, like that's active. Protecting your peace is a very uh, vigilant activity. You feel me? Like, it's an active thing. You can't really take no days off, take no moments off, no scenarios off. So the cost is the work. Like, a lot of people think peace is like favorable scenario and favorable circumstance. Like, people think they have peace because they money up. Or people think they have peace because they finally got the good job. Like, peace ain't got nothing to do with your circumstances and everything to do with you being able to stay on your square regardless of what's going on around you. And that takes different work based on what season you in. Kind, kind. So again, he's uh, he's talking about peace. So speaking of peace, let's uh, let's let's uh, talk about peace for a little bit. Um let's say when you've had a very very busy day, you finally get a moment to yourself. Doesn't that feel peaceful? Good. Doesn't that feel, doesn't that feel peaceful? Calm. Huh. Absolutely. Huh. So in that moment, do you want do you want that that peace, that time to last longer or shorter? Longer. Longer. <laughs> Long. Look, that's <laughs> absolutely right. Absolutely. We want that. We want to want that peace to stop. Uh, so uh, I, I absolutely agree with you. You want more and more peace, right? So that completely makes sense. Now, um, let's let's think about let's we'll take it in, in a different direction. Let's think about a time when you when you went on like uh, your favorite vacation spot, or or maybe you haven't gone to the place yet, but let's say you have a um, an idea of where you want to go really, really, really badly. Like what, what, it might be your your top uh, choice for vacation. I don't know, maybe like a, a Caribbean spot, or you know whatever it is you like. Maybe, maybe some of y'all want to go to the ice tundra. I, ain't, I don't know what y'all like, <laughs> but for me it'd be a Caribbean spot. Um, but um. Let's see. Uh, but uh, but anyway, can y'all see yourselves taking all that in and experiencing like all of that type of situation your favorite place has to offer? How how, do, how would y'all feel about that? If, if I was to go, I feel the most best thing yeah. ever. The best the best place to be. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. What were you say, Judah Dick? Oh uh, shit! What Katazi said? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely, man. So, uh, so do you think it was peaceful? That, do you think it was peaceful? Because that's what we're talking about. Do you think it was peaceful uh, with Yahweh before he created anything? And this is you talking about the Father. Do we think it was peaceful with him before he created anything? Calm. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely. Would you would you suppose would you suppose that he had any problems? Like, what do you think? None. No. None. Peace, right? The word Absolutely. problem puppy didn't even exist over there. Exactly. exactly. So, so peace. Yeah, he, he had peace. Now let's 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 uh, go back to that that same vacation vision, right? Would it be better to enjoy that trip alone or with your favorite person or your or your favorite people in the world? What, what would you choose? Alone or would you choose to uh, enjoy that vacation spot and create those memories with your favorite person or? You know, uh, or your favorite group of people in the world? Favorite people. Yeah, yeah your favorite people. Calm, calm. Absolutely. There's more enjoy. There's more enjoy because you can see you can see them at peace as well. Yeah, you know, you got something to remember and bounce stories off of them, and just uh, have that experience with, right? You know what I'm saying? Uh, so I, I absolutely agree. And like I said, maybe you don't have a significant other, but you would imagine that same thing that being with that significant other and more than likely we, we would want to be with that person, you know, in that type of situation where we're in an exquisite place, our favorite place and enjoying that whole situation, you know, forever. So I got another question and it's kind of, it's kind of out of left field here. Uh, in the Bible, when was the first sacrifice made? Khan, the first sacrifice was made. Uh, the first sacrifice was made when the Most High had to put tonics of cloak on Adam and Eve to cover them in their necklace. That was the first sacrifice. Because he wouldn't have to have done that if they didn't break the commandment and the law. When they broke it, he had to cover them. 
um, with uh, animal skin, mm. which was the tonic to cover them in their neckedness. He had to cover them in their shame. That was the first sacrifice to me, what I believe, because it wasn't no other sacrifice. All right, anybody else? Any other answers? All right, all right, cool. All right, so we're gonna hold that. We're gonna take a look at something real quick. All right, I'm gonna take a look at something. Let me adjust my screen a little bit. Make this a little bit better, maybe. All right. Let's take a look at this. I just came from acupuncture. And while I was on the table, I had a thought. True creation requires sacrifices. In other words, you have to make small changes in your life that will lead you towards your wants, needs, and or desires. Do you know what I'm saying? This is another way to activate your mind-body connection. Just make small changes, and those small changes will become bigger changes in your life, and you will start to see a ripple effect. The results are pretty freaking phenomenal. True creation requires necessary sacrifices. It doesn't have to be dramatic. Just start making small changes, and it will lead you towards your desired outcome okay all right so so you're saying creation uh requires sacrifice you guys believe you guys uh, agree with that creation uh requires sacrifice god god i can see that all right so let's go to john one uh john one and one um, let me get there john one and one and we're gonna do verse one and two i'll grab it <laughs> if we, this is the book this is the book of John chapter 1 verse 1 in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God the same was in the beginning with God all right cool so let's let's uh, let's see if we could think about it again <clears throat> um after reading that who do you think made the first sacrifice? We're gonna, we're gonna, I'm a, a, we'll, 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 uh, we'll loop back around, right? So we were talking Yahweh. about, huh? Yahweh had to sacrifice first a piece of himself to do anything. Absolutely. The first sacrifice was Yahweh because remember, we, we were talking about uh, when it was just him, was there peace? How could there be a problem? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So the first thing he sacrificed was uh was uh, his peace he he made the first sacrifice so he and he made the first sacrifice um uh when he when he uh when he created his son so he he sac he sacrificed his peace and tranquility uh to create Yahweh shop think about it like when you know when you have a child you, a lot of your energy has to be sacrificed to go into teaching and raising that child so he rep he he um he created his son so he had to sacrifice some of himself in order to teach Yahweh Shah, in order to put some of himself into Yahweh Shah. It actually was a sacrifice. Uh, does that make sense? Come. Huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, cool, cool. So who do you think made the second sacrifice? Yahweh Shah. Yeah. All right. All right. Let's see. We're going we gonna to piecemeal this thing together. We're going to take a look at something else right quick. We moving slow, but we getting there. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at this. Sacrifice creates paradise. I mean, that's just that's really what it is. People think they're gonna stumble across shit, but like, truly becoming successful is sacrificing today for a better tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, so sorry about the language. We are we actually I'll have to block these things out when I um, when I edit it. But there are a few of these um, a few little. Um, clips to have uh, some some sour language unfortunately um but we need the points that are that, that are being made so we're gonna we're gonna go right back to john uh one and three john one and three oh my god my controls disappeared on me. <laughs> you'll protect my necklace here we go john one hey, that's so hard oh, this is the book this is the book of John, 
chapter one, verse three. All oops. Book of John, chapter one, verse three. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Ah, so again, right there, we see that it was him with that creation. And just like we saw with that um, video before, creation takes sacrifice. Creation takes sacrifice. And in that last video, it was talking about uh, sac you have to sacrifice. Your sacrifice creates paradise. So he had a goal when he's uh, when he's uh, when he's creating. He had he had a goal. He had a particular mission when he was creating. Uh, let's go to let's go to uh, Genesis two. Uh, Genesis 2 and 2, we're going to go 2 through 4. Whoever wants to grab it. Uh, I'll grab it. And this is Genesis chapter 2, verse 2. And on the seventh day, God ended his work which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. And he, and God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because that in it, in it he had rested from all his work, which God created and made. These are the generations of the heavens and of the earth when they were created in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. God, God, God. So question for, for everybody. So when you when you go to work, are you exerting yourself? Yeah. Are you exerting? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Exert yourself. Are you are are you trying to achieve certain goals when you're at work and when you're exerting yourself? Yep. And, <laughs> and is it a challenge? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. So uh, so it's who said Yahawashah rested? It says in God rested, but we know that's the God of creation, which is Yahawashah, as we as we talked about before, because everything was created by Him. So it says, so uh, when he created everything, it says he rested. Who said he rested? Yeah. Uh, this is this is the this is the Torah, which was written by Moses. And who gave Moses the Torah? Yahusha. So Yahusha was the one that said he rested, right? Con. Con. Absolutely. So. Uh, so did did uh, did he say he was working and exerting in his uh, his, uh, his power his his virtue when he was creating when he did those things that took some energy out of him right? Come. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that was another sacrifice. That was the second sacrifice. He was sacrificing just like when we when we talked about the woman of the woman with the issue of blood and virtue or power came out of him, meaning he felt that exertion. He felt that power uh, coming out of him. So in this same situation, I know a lot of people, uh, you know, try to suggest that, you know, um, hey, he, you know, he absolutely is all powerful in all these different things. And I know there's a scripture about him, you know, not having to uh, rest. But this scripture says he says specifically that he rested. Isn't that yeah. correct? Um, mm -hmm. He said it, so he had to sack. So he sacrificed uh, uh, himself such when he made that correction that he that he, when he uh, made um, the creation such that he he uh, he he needed to rest, and that became our our uh, our Shabbat. Is that meaningful? Let's go to Genesis two and, and twenty one through twenty four. Um, into twenty one through twenty four. Okay. I'll read it. Oh. Okay. I'll, okay. Okay. <laughs> and the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman, and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. Ah, so who, who made the third sacrifice there? Adam. Adam. Because he, he had he had a he had a rib taken out of him. <laughs> now I don't it, it it wasn't his idea, but he absolutely sacrificed. That was part of his sacrifice. So he sacrificed part of himself for Eve's creation. And uh, similarly, when we think about a women sacrifice part of themselves 
uh, with pregnancy and childbirth. They said they're sacrificing themselves. So we were designed to leave our parents and cleave to our wives and go reproduce Yah's order again and again and again. This is what this is. We're supposed to leave our fathers and our mothers and, and, uh, and cleave to our wives so we can start that process of creation, create, recreating Yah's order over and over again. Does that make sense? Come on. That's the that's that's the uh, that's the plan. That's the mission. Uh, so let, let's go to uh, uh, Genesis three night three and nineteen. We're gonna do nineteen, and then we're gonna skip to to twenty one. Skipping around. Okay. All right, go ahead, sis. This is the book of Genesis, chapter three, verse nineteen. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread till thou return unto the ground for out of it was thou taken for dust thou art and unto dust thou unto dust shalt thou return I was gonna unto, unto Adam also and to his wife did the Lord God make coats of skin and clothe them God so this is what uh, IQ was talking about so of course we know this situation this is after the fall after they they ate of the uh, ate of the fruit, and they got then they were judged for it. You know, so uh, we know what this is all about. They sinned and they disobeyed the Most High, uh, and they were sentenced. And they and they were actually sentenced to death. It says, "From th from dust thou art, and unto into dust shalt, shalt thou return." That's a death sentence. Y'all get that? Mm -hmm. they, they were they were sent sentenced to death. Uh, <clears throat> But um, but what do you? How wish I do? Let me see. Let me see. Where is it? What do you? How wish I do in twenty one here? What did he give them? Uh, he gave them coats of skin. He gave them coats of skin, and what did Q said? That was another sacrifice. That was another <laughs> sacrifice. So you how wish I sacrificed again? And um, let's look at it. it. Says it says make coats of skins. So that's multiple animals right there. At least at least two animals. So oh. and we can look at it. That's that's a life. That's a, a life for a life. You know. Okay. So we see that there's some sacrificial principles going on right now. So um, the, instead of uh, taking them out um, instantly, this is we see that he also gave them grace and mercy. We understand that he didn't kill them immediately. So he gave them grace. So, he, so even though they got a death sentence, he didn't kill them immediately. He gave them grace and some, some grace and mercy never in, in that uh, situation. Uh, so uh, he also in this situation, he, uh, instead of killing them instantly, he gave them that grace and mercy. And he, uh, he also taught them the, a system of sacrifice and offerings as a way to cover their sins uh, going forward. Does that make sense? Oh. Because those animals were sacrificed in order for them to get those skins as clothing so they could move forward, um, you know, with their lives, you know, when they went outside of the, uh, when they went outside of the garden. Uh, so, so these sacrifices and offerings, they're also like a, like a set of, uh, it's like a set, a way, a way of asking for forgiveness and showing appreciation at the same time for an opportunity to try again. So this is a system. This is a system that we're, that, that uh, Adam and Eve were given and, and actually that we were given. So this is why we see their, that uh, their, the first sacrifice outside the garden with their offering to Cain and Abel. Because they were taught this in, they were taught this with their with their fall, and we see that sacri their sacrifice with Cain and Abel, and that that whole situation that they got into. Uh, so that's where we see that system being put in place, that system of sacrifice and offerings being put in place. So things at this point have changed. So the system of sacrifice was uh, was really since Adam and Eve, but we don't really see it until and later on we don't see it formally anyway until later on when it shows up in the law statutes and commandments through the uh through the, the, uh, the levitical priesthood but we do actually also see it with um with the with the covenants and stuff like that with the covenants that were made by sacrifice if we think about um um uh our father abraham you know it was illustrated with that because 
he makes that he, he had to make sacrifices in order to get into that covenant. So we see again that there's a system pertaining to sacrifice that's 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 set up for our existence. Let's take a look at something else. But I'm on Salaki G cues go send up. Oh, go ahead, dog. Oh, well, um, that was absolutely correct. Everything you're saying about the sacrifices, the, the, the sacrifices had to continue on throughout history for our lives to cover us in our sins. Um, the reason why I said that sacrifice, that was that was that was an awesome piece of knowledge that um, Mordecai brought to uh, light about that most high sacrifice himself to uh, give life to us. But I, I was looking at it at the sacrifice that the Most High had to make for us for our sin against him. We broke the commandment. Adam and Eve broke the commandment. They didn't see themselves naked at first when they was they was in a natural state. It, it, everything was pure. So upon, you know, breaking the commandment, they, the, the wickedness, the evil or whatever came on them to see, see, uh, for eating from the tree of knowledge of, uh, of good and evil, that that they broke, um, that commandment again. I'm, I'm, I'm repeating myself, but they saw themselves in nakedness. They saw themselves naked. They try to sew fig leaves together to cover they self from the shame that they had. They it was too shame. They was too. They, they were shamed to even look upon each other with what God the Most High created us to be in our natural state. So they made the fig leaves. That's why I said uh, the most high uh, sacrificed the animals to cover them in their shame so that they can go forward with their lives without having that thought of being ashamed of each other in their natural state. Mm -hmm. So now they cast it out. It's like they end up, they, they have to, they have, they're looking at the world differently than they was look, looking at it before they failed. So it's, it's it's much harder now, and I think the Most High set those atonements for the sacrifices to get us back to Him, God. into our natural state of worshiping and putting Him first over everything. And it's a it's it's like a lesson being taught over and over and over, the same lesson over and over and over. Because if you if you don't do it right the first time in in, in our abilities of living and making choices and decisions. We're going to go right back to the drawing board and that grace and mercy is, keeps extending itself for us. So yeah. those are sacrifices made over and over. Whenever we ask for forgiveness, System we, 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 we sacrifice, this is a sacrifice unto them. The most High already set the sacrifice in place for us, the atonement to cover our, us and our sins. Yeah. And it's, it's like <clears throat> sacrificing Yahweh Shah over and over and over again like to take him through the sacrifice what he went through for our sins, for the yes. remission of our sins, to take all our sins. Well, yeah, well, yes, <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yes, yes, and no, yes, and yes, and no, um, yes, and no. Uh, I might talk about that a little bit later on, but uh, but yes, and no. Um, but in this situation, it's like we are being allowed. To sacrifice as a, uh, we are being allowed to sacrifice as a cover. So, so that sacrificial, the, the sacrificial system, is a system to cover us and and, and allow us grace and, and mercy. So, that, as opposed to catching that immediate judgment. So, the ability to sacrifice is a, the the principle of sacrifice is actually a blessing. It's a huge, huge blessing. All right, let's take a look at something, uh, something else real quick. This thing will not get where I want it to be. All right, let's take a look at something. What you want means so much to you, you must pay the price. But if you find the price is too much for what little you want to do, you will step back. Uh -oh. If you want to do your own thing, you must understand there will be a price to pay. Only thing you're complaining about is how to have what I want without paying a price. There is no such life. If what you want means so much to you, you must pay the price. But if you find the price is too much for what little you want to do, you will step back naturally. This is so with every step in our life. When we want to do something, there will be a price attached to it. We must evaluate. 
Do I want to pay this price? What I want, does it mean so much to me? Some people want it so badly, they're willing to pay any price. For some people, it's a passing interest, so they will drop it and they'll go on. There's nothing wrong with both. Both are fine. Look at one more. Growing up, my dad is the man of the house. There's no conversation about that. There was a respect, there was order to the house. It didn't mean that we loved him more or we put him at a higher pedestal than my mother. But as a leader of this family, of what happens to this family, we looked at him. But it fell more responsibility. It wasn't a pride thing, it wasn't an ego thing. Like if we only had one meal, my father wasn't the one eating it. If we were cold and there was only one blanket, my father wasn't the one using it. If there was a fire in the building and me and Jessica were in a like a building lit on fire. My mom and dad are not going to be sitting outside discussing, okay, who's equally going to go into the fire right now? My father would say, stay here, I'm going in. And I think people misconstrued this idea of like it's worth more, but it's actually not. He put us above him. Yeah. And so like, I, it just broke my heart that I'm watching people say like, oh, the man in the house, like, yo, that's f***ed up. Like they should be equal. Like they're sh on them and it's like, whoa, 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 hold on. Did you just really take everything that they sacrificed and threw it back in their face? Well, again, sorry about the language. Uh, but from that video, again, we're, we're talking about the sacrifice. And so in that situation that the guy was just explaining, he was talking about uh, his father. And of course, he was talking about how his father was slated for sacrifice. And without, even, without that even being um, a question, he knows that he's sacrificing for his family. So if we go back and we look at these uh, descriptions that we're going over right now and the principle here, we see that uh, through Yah and Yahawashai, the principle and a pattern of sacrificing for someone else has been laid. We're seeing that. So we, we, we take a lot of things for granted. We Israelites, we take a lot of things for, for granted. That's, uh, let's, uh, let's see if we can get some some understanding. We're going to go to the uh, to the Apocrypha uh, real quick. We're going to go to Second Esther 6, uh, 38. We're going to do a little skipping around. 6 and 38. We're going to do a little skipping around now. Let me get this shared on screen. All right, so Second Esther 6 and 38. Um, and then we're going to skip to 54 and 55. Whoever wants to grab it. Second Ezra 6 and 38. I'll grab it. All right. This is Second Ezra chapter 6, verse 38. And I said, O Lord, thou spakest from the beginning of the creation, even the first day, and saidest thus, let heaven and earth be made, and thy word was a perfect work. It was perfect. Let's go to 54, uh, do 54 and 55. Come on. And after these, Adam also, whom thou madest Lord of all thy creatures, of him come we all, and the people also whom thou hast chosen. All this have I spoken before thee, O Lord, because thou madest the world for our sakes. So he's, he's saying because the, uh, the, uh, the Most High or Yahweh Shah made the world for our sakes. And he's, he's talking about Israel. He made the world for the sake of Israel. Let's do 58, 59. Kind. But we, thy people, whom thou hast called thy firstborn, thy only begotten, and thy fervent lover, are given into their hands. If the world now be made for our sakes, why do we not possess an inheritance with the world? How long shall this endure? Kind. So when I'm saying that we, we're taking things for, for granted, we have to understand the big picture. And this is what Yahweh, of course, and Yah are looking at the big picture. The whole world was made for Israel. Of course, we know Israel is, is the uh, wife. The whole world is made for Israel. What we don't think about many times is, is that sacrifice, that powered exertion that he did. We don't we don't think about the the peace that y'all had he had he was chilling <laughs> you know what i'm saying no problems whatsoever and then he then he uh he decided to create something and then his son decided to go on a to further his father's mission and create you know what i'm saying and this is when when they did these things they had to sacrifice of themselves and take on these issues like i said when like those videos were saying creation is a sacrifice 
So this is what's been going on and what we're not paying attention to. Uh, and it's, it's all our own fault. And it started with Adam and Eve. We're not appreciating that sacrifice that they did. Uh, let's go to um, let's go to Second Ezra 7, uh, 10 through 14 real quick. Okay. And right. I said, it is so, Lord. Then said he unto me, even so also is Israel's portion. Because for their sakes I made the world. And when Adam transgressed my statutes, then was decreed that now is done. Then were the entrances of the world made narrow, full of sorrow and travail. They are but few and evil, full of perils and very painful. For the entrances of the world were, were wide and sure and brought immortal fruit. Ah, so, so just when they when they made that um, that sin, when they sinned against the, those instructions, they changed the entire world. Like we said, everything was changed. So not only did the, did um, did they have to be sacrificed for, and this principle and pattern of sacrifice had to be uh, installed into them. Um, the whole world changed in the, the state of the world and not only the state of the world, what they have to go through. Uh, and as a consequence, what we have to go through now, life is a labor. And that's not that wasn't the original design. That wasn't the original design at all. Uh, Yah never wanted sacrifices. He never wanted sacrifices. So this is this is why we don't see sacrifices in the father's kingdom. When we look at the prophecy about the father's and the father's kingdom. But there are still sacrifices in the, the where the sacrifices are actually reinstituted in in the millennial kingdom, which is Jehoshaphat's kingdom. When we're going through that wilderness period, that thousand years, there will be sacrifices again, you know. But when we get to the Father's kingdom, there aren't any sacrifices anymore. So of course, the Father's kingdom that's the eternal kingdom, and this is going back to the original design. But everything is perfected at that point. So sacrifices from us is not what he is not what he wanted at all do we understand this um, everybody get it okay um i'm um i understand what you're saying mm -hmm. yeah how was shy like i stated i don't think you when you say you agree and disagree but you didn't state what you agreed upon and what you disagreed upon because the sacrifice of your shy for sin that's an a that that's a sacrifice for him. The most high used him as a sacrifice. Right. And we no longer had to use animal sacrifices anymore. Now right. he's the sacrificial lamb. Every time a person sin, he sac it's like he said it is done. When he gave up the ghost, it is done. Sacrifice sacrifice for Israel. Every time we sin, it's like putting Yahusha back in uh uh it's like it's done, it's set. But when we sin against him, we breaking the commandments, we breaking the law, however way we do it, we have to ask for forgiveness, we have to have an atonement to, to wipe our slate clean. That's those are all those are sacrifices over and over for us. Right. That's why it's not. That's why we shouldn't sin. That's why we shouldn't break the laws and break the commandments, because the most high is putting the most high is going to stay working. Yahweh Shach going to stay working. He's at the right. He's he's on his throne, but he's setting atonement because today or tomorrow, tomorrow's not promised to us. We right. can die in our sin, not having the opportunity to act for you know forgiveness of that sin that we acted in or that law of commandment that we broke the most Yahweh said it for us to have that with him have that with uh, Yahweh all right so 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 real quick um you're right I didn't speak on it because it's it's uh it's 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 a it's a couple of different things so you're absolutely right in terms and the scripture even says what you what you said about um sinning after we basically after we come to the truth sinning sinning there's no more repentance for sin there's no more um sacrifice for sin basically is what it says which goes to goes toward what you were saying the reason why i said yes and no because yes i agree with that portion of it yes i absolutely agree and we all know that yahweh is a sac is a sacrifice for our sin the the part that i disagree with was well not necessarily disagree but there's another element of it that rep that um relates to 
um, the principle of sacrifice, which is something that uh, he set forth among amongst us. So we'll talk about that as the lesson goes on. So that's why I didn't go through it. Um, okay. In there, you know what I'm saying? Uh, let's go to um, Leviticus 19 and two, because again, uh, we got to see uh, what the original design was. Let's go to Leviticus 19 and two. Is this it? All right, Leviticus 19 and two. This is Leviticus chapter 19, verse two. Speak unto all the congregation of the children of Israel and say unto them, ye shall be holy for I, the Lord, your God am holy. Uh, so we see that the original, that this is the original design. The original, the, the original design is for us to be holy like he is holy. Let's go to Leviticus 20. We're going to do 22 through 26. And two, ye shall therefore keep all my statutes and all my judgments and do them that the land whither I bring you to dwell therein spew you not out. And you shall not walk in the manners of the nation which I cast out before you. For they committed all these things and therefore I therefore I abhorred them. But I have said unto you, ye shall inherit their land and I will give it unto you to possess it, a land that floweth with milk and honey. I am the Lord your God, which have separated you from other people. Mm -hmm. Ye shall therefore put put difference between clean beasts and unclean, and between unclean fowls and clean, and ye shall not make your souls abominable by beast or by fowl or by any manner of living thing that creepeth on the ground, which I have separated from you as unclean. Mm -hmm. And you shall be holy unto me, for I am the Lord, for Salaki, for I the Lord am holy, and have severed you from other people, that you should be mine. Amen. Amen. Oh no, you got it. Okay, twenty six. So um I thought you were saying amen. <laughs> but uh but absolutely. <laughs> man. Um so we see right here that the original plan was for us to be holy just like he is holy because remember we were supposed to be replicating his order that was the that was the original goal for us to replicate uh his order but now he has to go through all these different things going back to you know like uh what what Quartazzi is saying this is a sacrifice that he has to go through because we violated his his original order so he's having to experience all these things and because he has to experience all these things of sacrifice he's making sure that we understand what it is to sacrifice as well so he's not the only one that has to sacrifice thus we have that system of sacrifices um um that's put together so we so we understand what the what the uh what the deal is let's go to uh psalms 40 6 through 10 Psalms 40, 6 through 10. Whoever wants to grab that. Psalms 40, 6 through 10. I'll take it. All right. This book of Psalms, chapter 40, verse 6. Sacrifice and offering. Thou didst not desire, mine ears has a thou open burnt offering and sin offering has thou not required mm -hmm. then said I lo I come in the volume of the book it is written of me I delight to do thy will O my God yea thou law is within my heart oh, I have preached I, righteousness hey, hold on for one second I just I shouldn't interrupt you but I just wanted to bring emphasis because there's like a little there he's there there's uh, something going on where he's showing where he's showing a difference here a difference in attitude so in the very beginning sacrificing off in offering thou didn't uh didn't in other words did not desire he didn't desire to sacrifice an offering uh now my ears have has opened burnt offering and sin offering has thou not required you didn't require that of us that was not required of us and so then we get to the, um, the the rewriting of everything and and getting and getting the true understanding of what of what was truly the desire. So he says, "Lo, I come in the volume of, of the book. It is written of me." So this is, of course, a prophecy about Yahweh coming coming correct. 
Uh, and so now we get into what Yahweh Shai knows is, was, is the actual mission. So go ahead and continue with eight, uh, Q. I delight to do thy will, O oh my God. Yea, thou laws, thou law is written within my heart. Mm -hmm. I have preached righteousness in, in the great congregation. Lo, I have not refrained my lips, O oh Lord, thou knowest. Mm -hmm. I have not hid thou righteousness within my heart. I have declared thou faithfulness and thou salvation. I have not concealed thou loving kindness and thou truth from the great congregation. Con, con, con. So we see that it was never about sacrifice. He didn't want that. That had to be input because uh, input for us. He started he, he, uh, Yah and Yahweh shall sacrifice, but he wasn't looking for us to sacrifice. He he wanted what he wanted from us was righteousness and delighting in his will, as the uh, as the um, as the scripture is saying. That's what he wanted from us. That's what he desired. And and uh, and why is that? The reason why. Is because Yahweh Shai knows what his father requires. He knows what his father's what his father requires. Again, if we think about uh, the millennial kingdom versus Yahweh's kingdom, the Father's kingdom, the eternal kingdom, there is a difference. So he knows that he himself is only going to judge righteous judgment, and he knows what's on the other side of, of all of these things. If we don't, if we if we um, um, don't do righteously. Which is what they, uh, which is what both of them uh, require and ex and, uh, and expect. Uh, let's uh, let's go to Luke, uh, Luke thirteen and three. There we go. Luke thirteen and three. All right. So let's go to that's uh, somebody get Luke thirteen and three real quick. I'll grab it. I'll grab it. All right. This is the book of Luke, chapter 13, verse 3. I tell you, nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Perish. Absolutely. So there's an understanding here. He knows what's on the other side if we don't um, repent and if we don't get back in right order. Let's go to um, 2 Esther 9, uh, 9 and 7. Esther's nine and seven. Uh, like I said, so all of these things are being put in place for order, but we are not really getting the full concept. We, we, we're coming at it from a different mindset than Yahweh Shai is. So we're going to explore all of those things, um, you know, throughout this, uh, throughout this lesson. Uh, so let's check this out. Uh, go ahead and get second Esther's nine, seven through 13, and then we'll skip to 15. Whoever wants to grab it. This is the book of Ezra. Chapter, what chapter is it? Uh, chapter 9, we're doing verse 7 through 13, and then we're going to skip to 15. This is the book of Ezra, chapter 9, starting with verse 7. And everyone that shall be saved and shall be able to escape by his works and by faith, whereby ye believe, shall be preserved from the said perils and shall see my salvation in my land and within my borders. For I have sanctified them for me from the beginning. All right, Con, real quick. So we see that there is a plan. Everyone shall be saved if they, if by their works. They can escape um, by their works, by their faith, like we talked about in the very beginning regarding faith. Uh, where that whereby they have belief, so there is a plan, uh, a plan so in I'll place. I'll uh, I'll oh, go ahead. Um, just just as a uh, Q and you both, uh, I'm going to say something that both of you uh, piggyback off of something both of you said. Um, Q was saying uh, was saying uh, something uh, about uh, what Yahweh Shai did for us, and I think the proper word is that he he had. He has a uh, he redeemed he has redeemed us from sin, and um, right here in verse seven, where whereby ye have believed, you know what I mean. 
Right. And then, and then, and then, what you have said, Gadon, was um, uh, Yahweh knows what the Father wants because He's right there with the Father. Mm-hmm. You understand? So, in the in the in the Millennium Kingdom, we're going to come, and He's going to make sure everyone is proper, so we can go to the mansion. I, you know what I mean? Right. And this, right. And this is this is this is what you know. This is this is the thing. So, uh, uh, through, because we've been redeemed. You know, we shouldn't beat ourselves up. We should repent. Don't think about something, some make some design up like uh, Judas Isaacrat went and hung himself instead of just immediately going to repent or uh-huh. go to the Father. You know, it's don't don't think of don't 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 lean upon your own understanding. Uh-huh. And then and uh-huh. in that fashion, through, through being redeemed, you know, we can uh-huh. we can we can stand firm and steadfast. You know. God. It's a long suffering relationship, you know. But absolutely, that, that's bro. Yeah, that's so great. So you're absolutely right because there is a redemption plan. So it's just like, um, let's say, <laughs> let, let's say, let's say you got a you got a friend. Uh, let's say you need a job, and you got a friend that's working at this at this facility, and the friend can get you in, uh, can get you a, um, a job interview. Because they're because they're in good with with the hiring manager or whatever, but they like look, I can get you just this job, but you got to do such and such and such and such and such and such. So they know what the manager is looking for, and they're deliver and they're saying to you, look, if you want this, this is what you have. This is what you have to do. So you have to follow these different instructions in order to get to that other side. If you don't, you're not going. You're not going to get that job. So this is this is that that same example. There is a plan that th- that your friend is giving you to help you get what you want, and to help and to help you get and to help the manager get what the manager wants because the manager wants a good employee in that situation. We got the same situation here with that redemption plan, which was which is set up by the um, uh, uh, basically by that system of of, uh, of sacrifice. Uh, but let's talk about the other side because this is what he's trying to. These are the perils that he's trying to save us out of. Uh, let's. Uh, I think you were at nine, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. So like King, I just had my hand raised. I just want to add. I mean, that was that was what uh, Brother Mordecai was saying. Gave me chills all through my body because the, the Most High know, Yahweh Shai know. All we have to do is activate the faith that we have in them. God. To believe in the power that they have to redeem us through forgiveness and repentance, mm-hmm. it can operate the way a lot of, unfortunately, a lot of uh, Israel don't keep that faith, God. don't keep to the promises to believe in this power that Yahweh and Yahweh shall have to redeem us from that sin, uh, and that's what keep us out of the new kingdom. If we don't believe and have faith, we're not gonna have no understanding. It's it's a beautiful thing to be anointed, to uh, share the, the, the ruach hakodesh with them, to have it, to have the word to read and to believe it and have faith in it, to to go to go on, not to stay stagnant and like like a Mordecai was saying, bro, Mordecai was saying, but beat ourselves up. Look, man, repent and just don't go back and do it. Forgive, move forward and. You know that's 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 a lot of power, brother. Uh, uh, an unbeliever don't believe this. God. He's not going to be able to believe this truth. It's no God. way he fights it. He scoff against it. They, they want to bat, beat up, beat the messengers up, <laughs> beat the ones that the Most High chose to walk in this truth. Con and just to go back to this to this um to the scripture because we talked about in the very beginning when um when um Yahweh Shai created everything, he exerted power. And he, need, and he needed to rest from his work. He needed to rest from his work. He was following his father's mission. He needed to rest from his work. What do we see right here with, with, uh, with brother, brother Mordecai Ray in the very beginning? We can escape by, by uh, our works and by our faith, which we believe. So works is part of it. Works is the obedience. So this system is actually a system of sacrifice and obedience. I hope I'm not, I might be jumping the gun of my own lesson, but this is, this is what this is. This whole thing is, is a system of sacrifice and obedience uh, because we blew, we blew the original plan. All right. But let's, um, so both of y'all appreciate those, um, those admissions, man. Those are great uh, think statements that you guys made them right on point. Um, Let's get to let's get to um, to verse nine 
we'll do uh we're gonna do nine through thirteen and then we'll skip to uh, f- uh fifteen, okay? All right, come. <clears throat> then verse nine. Then shall they be in pitiful then let then shall they be in pitiful case, which now have abused my ways. And they that have passed them away despitefully shall dwell in torments. For such as in their life have received benefits and have not known. That's grace and mercy. That's grace and mercy. That's those benefits. Go ahead. Uh, And they that have loathed my law while they had yet liberty. And when as yet place of repentance was opened unto them, understood not, but despised it. Both of y'all just spoke on that. Absolutely. Go ahead, Doc. The same must know it after death by pain. So they're going to know that they despised it after death. So this is our chance. This is that we got sentenced to death. This is our grace and mercy period. So, oh. so, and if we don't take advantage of that, like you're saying right here, we're going to know it by death and by death in pain. We, in other words, we're going to get, we're going to die. Uh, and in that death <laughs> is pain as opposed to eternal life. It's a big, big difference. All right, 13, and then we're going to skip to 15. And therefore, thou not, therefore be thou not curious how the ungodly shall be punished. And when, but inquire how the righteous shall be saved. Mm. Who's the world? is and for whom the world is created ah, mm-hmm. 15, 15 you said 14, 15? No, then, wait, 15. Then, oh, 15 yeah I have said before and now do speak and will speak it also hereafter that there are that there be many more of them which perish than of them that shall be saved Con, con, con. So just like, just like, uh, this is a great scripture right here, because he's telling us, look, uh, look, yeah, it's going. If you don't remember, there's a sentence of death. You got a, uh, you got a death warrant out, brother. You got a death warrant out, sister. But look, there's, there's a, there's a way out. And look, yes, if you don't do what, we, what, what you're supposed to do, what, you, what you're supposed to do, you're gonna die, and it's gonna be extremely painful and full of torment. But don't worry about that. Focus more on what you need to do to be saved, on what you need to do to be righteous. Again, the, 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 the assignment, the assignment right there. Mm-hmm. Just as you were saying, the focus is the assignment. God, you're right. Sorry. Sorry about that. Sorry, but you're absolutely right. The focus is the assignment. You know, God. we can worry about what they're doing and how they're doing, and they're looking good. But you know, we have to focus on the assignment. Sorry about that. You good, hey man. Sometimes it hits. We all know that, man. You know, so that's that's uh, that's exactly right. Like you know, focus on your your way out. And you were saying the same thing, dog. Look, let me let me brush it off and and, uh, and repent and get back to the my way out because there because there's a way out. The uh, the manager wants the job filled. You know what I'm saying? So th- there is a way out, and that's what we that's what we should be focusing on. Let's take a look at something else real quick here. Why, the Don, while we go on there, Salaki King, that is the most beautiful thing that one of the greatest and most beautiful things that Yahweh has done for us to uh-huh. make a way out of the wickedness that we live in, in, in the world. The world is wicked now. It's, it's, it's full of it. And the Most High has worked it out. All we have to do is just, if we have this relationship, we believe own it, man. Just, just get back to him. He, he says, get back to him. One hundred percent pure. It's like pure one hundred. It's not what has been done has been done. Repent it. I'm not going there no more. Um, ask for forgiveness. I want to be. That's 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 like almost like a plea of pride. It's like I want to be right with you, Father. I want to be right for you, man. You think he he gonna dust you off and get you back in in order? Yeah. God. Just to faith and to believe in that power. 
uh, and we're gonna speak on the, we're gonna speak a little bit uh, on that mindset that you're talking about, the improper mindset that you're talking about. We're gonna get we're gonna get there too, because that gets in our way. Well, both of y'all talked about that. We're gonna we're gonna talk about that too, because those are real critical um, critical um, uh, points. And again, these are things that are stifling us in the way. And this is the enemy that's that's uh, that's throwing us off track and putting these things uh, in in our way, um, which is. Uh, 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 opposite of the way that we need to go. Uh, but let's take a look at this real quick. You can have anything you want, but you can't have everything you want. You have to sacrifice most things in the medium term in order to be able to facilitate progress toward one thing, right? So you have a uh, plan for the next six months, right? Mm. Or the next year. By doing a thing, other things are going to have to be sacrificed. I want to grow my business. Okay, maybe your social life is going to take a little bit of a hit. Maybe your fitness is going to take a bit of a hit. Or I want to become, I want to get into a relationship. Okay, well, you're probably not going to be able to get as much sleep. Maybe you're going to have to, uh, your business is going to get less of your attention, whatever it might be. By focusing on one thing, you inevitably end up having to sacrifice focus on other things. Now, the problem that you and me and maybe a lot of the people listening to this that are type A go-getters that want to be able to have it all will feel is as soon as they start to feel something slip, they go, oh, fuck, fuck, fuck. Like, I, I'm, I'm supposed to stay lean. I'm supposed to stay, stay healthy and fit and whatever, whatever. And you go, by choosing in advance the things that you're going to suck at, the price that you're going to pay in order for success within which, whichever domain it is, it allows you to feel ease and acceptance when that particular domain does start to drop away, John. So, if we if we um, were to, were to uh, extrapolate some uh, points from that, let's look. We, we have to think about basically counting the cost and the plan to get to the to to get to a particular place. But sacrifice is necessary, and we talked about that from the very beginning. Our, our whole culture is set up based on sacrifice. And that started from the very beginning. So we have to understand that Yahweh Shai, he did count the cost. And so think we don't we don't think about Yah and Yahweh Shai very much. We're so selfish. We're so selfish minded. Yahweh Shai is taking a hit all of this time. All of these sacrifices he's having to do because he has a long range plan. He wants to get right there. He, he can if he wants to. But if he does it that way, that's that's almost like taking the enemy's route. That's like selling your soul with the instant gratification. And that's never the answer. The instant gratification is not the answer. So he's ha having to go through this period of sacrifice, having to sacrifice that that uh, that pleasure, and that that kingdom, that marriage that he wants right now for this long duration of time, which is going to make everything sweeter. If we think about the same thing uh, for us, we have to do the same thing in our lives for our part of the marriage, meaning that we have to sacrifice the things that the world that we've been attracted to through this world, the stuff that our flesh is attracted to. So we can sacrifice those things so that we can go after the things that we are required to do in order to get to the kingdom. We understand that? So we, so we have to think about, we have a sacrifice to make, and he has already been making a sacrifice. That's why there is a system of sacrifice and obedience that's necessary in order to complete this whole thing. He's sacrificing and he's being obedient to his father. We have to sacrifice and be obedient to him. And our sacrifices are even more involved than just regarding this regarding sin. I'm not sure we'll get to that today. Um, but remember this whole scripture, as we just read, Remember, throughout him, throughout the, throughout throughout the scriptures, scriptures is written of him. Let's go to Jonah two and I one through ten. Jonah two one through ten. Let me get this up. Jonah two one through ten. Got to get to it. Um, look at Jonah chapter two. And we're doing one through 10. So we're doing quite a bit here. Let's see if we can get through it pretty quickly. Jonah 2, 1 through 10. Go ahead, whoever. This is the book of Jonah, chapter 2, verse 1. Then Jonah prayed unto the Lord his God out of the fish, the fish's belly. And he said, I cried by reason of my affliction unto the Lord, and he heard me. Out of the belly of hell cried I. 
and thou heardest my voice. For thou hast cast me into the deep, in the midst of the seas, and, and the floods compassed me about. All thy billows and thy waves pass over me. I kind of hold I, for, one, for one quick second, because there's a double meaning here. Well, I really a triple meaning because it's you know these are events that actually happen. But so if we if we if we follow this, this is actually Yahweh Shah's process, but it's also Israel's process. It's Yahweh it's Yahweh Shah's process and sacrifice, but it's and it's also Israel's process and sacrifice. So I cry by reason of mine affliction unto unto uh, the Lord, and He have heard me out of the belly of hell. Cried I, and Thou heardest my voice. We we were sentenced to death. We were in the belly of hell. We were sentenced to death. Uh, you cast me into the deep, into the midst of the seas, and the, and the floods come past come past me about. If, so we so um, if we think about Israel, these are the curses. And that's being subjected to because in the scriptures, water, that's often that's people. And, and many times that's talking about other nations and the difficulties we have to go through dealing with other nations. So we were cast into the deep. We were cast into all the scattered into all of these different nations in the midst of the seas, in the midst of all these people. And the floods come past us about. We were surrounded. We're not in our we're not in our land. We're not. Uh, in safety anymore, and the billows and those and those waves passed over me. I'm drowning. I'm dying. I'm in a per I'm in a perilous situation, which is what this life is after the um, the garden. We have to toil and go through all of these hardships and blah blah blah. So again, there are multiple meanings here. Uh, go ahead, brother. I think we were at four. John, verse four. Then I said, I am cast out of thy sight. Yet I will look again toward thy holy temple. All right, kind of real quick. So in that situation, we could think about the divorce. Remember, he divorced the ten tribes, cut them off. Uh, so in uh, in the same thing with Israel, then, you know, because you know, in, in actuality, we left we left him. We violated the covenant. So that's being cast out of his sight. But yet I'm going to look again to your holy temple. I'm trying to return. This is repentance. I'm trying to return. All right, go ahead, five. John, verse five. The waters can pass me about even to the soul. The depth, the depth closed me round about. The weeds were wrapped about my head. Mm -hmm. I went down to the bottoms of the mountains. The earth was with her bars, was about me forever. Yet hast thou brought up my life from corruption, O Lord, my power. So, 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 even though we're looking toward back toward the temple, back toward the old the, the old paths, back toward our, our our Elohim, it's still tough. It's still a it's still a tough, tough, difficult life. But through all of these uh, all of these troubles, these tribulations, He's going to pull us out. He brought up brought up brought up my life from corruption, from death. He's going to save us. All right, go ahead, seven. God. When my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord, and my prayer came unto came in unto thee, into thy holy temple. Mm -hmm. They that observe lying vanities forsake their own mercy. Mm -hmm. But I will thank, but I will sacrifice unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pr I will pay that that I have vowed. Salvation is of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And the Lord spake unto the fish, and it vomited out Jonah upon the dry land. So not until, so they that observe those lying vanities forsake their own mercy. This is what Katazi was talking about when he was talking about these people that, you know, don't want to listen. They don't, they don't want to obey. And they, and they stay in, in, uh, in another way as opposed to going to, uh, you know, the Most High's way. But see this. It wasn't until he started talking about sacrifice. And of course, repentance was a little bit uh, up, up above. But it wasn't until he said, I will sacrifice unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving, that sacrifice, and I will pay that I have vowed. The sacrifice is, is, a, is a payment, it's part of what's required. Uh, salvation is of the Lord. So there's no, there's no small coincidence that sacrifice and salvation is linked. And it's at that point that the Most High has commanded the fish to, to spit Jonah out, to vomit Jonah out. Once that sacrifice was mentioned. So again, we have to understand 
that it was that play that that it was Jonah's uh, that pledged the process of sacrifice to the Most High that made that made uh, that made him command the fish to vomit him up. You understand this? It's because our whole culture is set up around the foundation of sacrifice. Yahweh Yah isn't just being nice to us. You know what I'm saying? This whole thing is around, is surrounded by is around sacrifice. So remember, he decided a path of sacrifice because he wants something out of it. He wants something out of it. Remember, Yah, Yah had peace. He created his son. Yahweh wants something out of this trouble, this sacrifice that he's going through. So he's not doing it just to be nice. He wants something out of it as well. We got that. So we so we got to see what his end goal is. Go ahead, Q. Con, con, that's awesome because that sacrifice that he made, for one, um, if you really truly think about it, the sacrifice he did in creation, Yahweh creating man, creating the woman for his glory. Now, when the atonement of that was broken, we got to keep in mind and always keep in mind that he is the Alpha and Omega. He's the beginning of time and the ending of time. He worked it all out for ourself with that, that self uh, glory that he's looking for and expecting from us. He's worked it out, but we have to go through. He or he can go, he can go back and forth in time. When you speak about Jonah going through what he was going through, the Most High was all I had already worked it out, but we wasn't there to see it. But it was worked out for our salvation right through the sacrifices that Yahweh and Yahweh Shai made look we got to work it out a look person have to be it have to, a person have to be very foolish or the most high just not dealing with them to not see this revelation that's going on that Yahweh was working out our soul salvation in history before we were even born yeah. Before my mom and daddy came together and got busy and brought me into this world, the <laughs> most I had already had that predestined. Ah, bro. Our lives was predestined. Why are, we shouldn't have to worry about tomorrow? To, 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 it, it has its own problems, its own worries. We can just do it to the day. We can walk through the blessings and the glory of Yahweh, Yahweh Shah today, every day, in the blessing. But look, and if we, if we go off course a little bit, we can get back on course through the repentance God. of the actual forgiveness and, and, and be glorified with him. Cause that's all the most I want us to be glorified with him. We want to, we want to share in the glory, but, 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 but it goes back to what you were saying earlier, bro. Like, look, look, look at, um, um, look at, uh, it was something that you said earlier in what you were talking, what you were talking about. Look at what it says in this, in, uh, in Jonah two and nine, but I will sacrifice unto, unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving. Like you said, Hallelujah. he sacrificed all of this stuff. We don't realize what kind of position he put us in. So huh. what, what what clicked him off and 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 uh, made basically gave him salvation because the uh, fish spit him up is because he pledged to to sacrifice unto him with a voice of thanksgiving. I huh. I, I appreciate acknowledging and I appreciate your sacrifice. Huh. You know huh. what I'm saying? So he. So it's, it's a big, big, big deal. You acknowledge huh. you, you're acknowledging um, the, repenting and not acknowledging you're wrong, and not just acknowledging you're wrong, because again, that's us focusing on us. Please forgive me. I did such a, a terrible job, and now we're locked into. I think I, I think it was Mordecai I was talking. About. I can't remember which one of y'all was talking about it. We're lo we're locked into focusing on you know um, us. We're gonna hang ourselves because we're in depression now because we're focusing on how bad we did. But huh. and, that, and we should definitely take um, be accountable for that. But we should be even more thankful that he's given us a way out. He's huh. given us a way out. And that is what should be our focus more so than us feeling depressed about what we did. And we so we have to sacrifice. We have to sacrifice. So we it's a big responsibility for us to sacrifice what we want to do, how we want to feel. So we can so we can express that voice of thanksgiving for what he's provided for us. Come, come. That neural pathway. That's a neural pathway because many shall not yeah. find that neural pathway of thanksgiving unto him. They don't even that that, that person have to be very very selfish, not to give thanks unto the Most High. Um, 
it, it's it's beautiful, man. I don't want to get off course because I I have a lesson tied to exactly what we're speaking on about how blessed we are with the most high and don't even know it. We don't even know it. We're not taking we're not taking we're not we it's like we're taking the most high for granted. Right. Of our lives living, we go to sleep, live, go to work, and obtain all these material. It's crap. It's crap for real. Yep. Compared to the compared to the, the gloriousness that we're going to receive in the in the kingdom. Yeah. Focused on the wrong thing. We focused on the flesh. We focus on the flesh. And so if we go back to, you know, like we said, where he's he's doing all of these things for a reason. Uh, uh-huh. yeah, you know, yes, it is absolutely nice. Is absolutely sacrificial, but he's also doing these things because it's something. It's, yes, he loves us, but he but he already said, "Look, some of y'all are going to die. Some of y'all, I'm, I'm gonna take I'm gonna take some of y'all out because again, he knows what his father requires, and he also requires righteousness, and he's not dealing with anything other than other than that. So he's also doing this because of what he wants and what is his end goal. His end goal is uh, if we well, we if we really take it all the way back to the father, the end goal is a righteous family eternally, a righteous family eternally. Remember, the initial mission was to replicate Yah's order over and over again. Leave the mother and the father, cleave to your wife and replicate. You're replicating that order. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're replicating that family because again, the world was made for our sake, for the sake of Israel. You're replicating that order over and over and over again. So his so this is what his end goal is. And so this is what we should we should be understanding his sacrifice is about. And we should be focused on his mission regarding that. Let's take a look at something real quick. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And again, we're talking about we're talking about the sacrifice of thanksgiving, which it shouldn't be hard for us, but it is because we're so daggone selfish. Sacrifice of thanksgiving. All right. Men go out every day. They they sacrifice spending time with their children. They sacrifice living a peaceful, relaxing life so that they can go out and provide for their family so their wife can stay home and relax. Women, they're, they're resenting men for wanting to provide for the family. It, it's, it's truly unbelievable. And women are trying to compete with men and it's so unnecessary. Do people not complain about... He set up the law, statutes, and commandments so that we have a way back to eter- immortality. Do uh-huh. we not complain about that? Like he's saying, the women complain, like, like the woman was saying, the women complain about that. Israel is the woman. We complain and reject this law, statutes, and commandments. Same uh-huh. thing. I got two uh-huh. others, brother. Let, let me get two other uh-huh. short uh-huh. right? Boy, you got it. Same it's subject so you'll be able to say it. Boy, you got it. <laughs> so, yeah, we got, I told y'all packed too much in here. We got to keep moving. <laughs> I'm, but I'm going to give it to you in a second. It's good. It's good. It's good. All right, it's a short one. In most cases, a man simply wants to provide for his family. He wants his work and his sacrifices to be noticed and appreciated. He wants his wife to love him and be affectionate towards him and care for him and respect him. And he wants his children to love him and appreciate him and respect him and be excited to see him. Whatever exact shape this takes, if a man can have all of that, he will be happy. If a man does not have that, he will probably not be happy. That's all. Look, <laughs> that's all. That's all he wants. <laughs> he wants to provide for us. He, he put... He put it. I mean, I'm getting a little hyped up. He put he put, you know, uh, Adam and Eve in paradise and provided everything for him. He wasn't requiring a sacrifice. He was requiring them to maintain what he gave him, but he wasn't requiring sacrifices. He wants to get us back to that exact same that exact same point again. Sac- their sacrifices will be reinstituted in the millennial kingdom because we're still trying to get right. But the folks that's going into the father's kingdom, they are right. And it's not going to be those sacrifices. It's paradise again, eternal paradise again. All right, uh, go ahead, Q. Uh, um, exactly. Uh, we can have a paradise here, and we can have it in the new kingdom, uh, lining up with what the Most High left us. He left the roadmap. He left everything. He did all the work. All we got to do is just walk it. We, our, our Israel itself, the men and the women. A, a man, I, I think if he, I believe he, if he loves doing what he's gifted to do, and uh, and he have that support from his wife, it would with that blessing that the Most High has instilled in him, 
the, the anointing, the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKadosh, giving him the power to do everything he can do. If we line up in order, not the woman trying to compete, they'd be like, I don't need a man or compete. Like I, I could do just as more and just as much as the man. It's a it's it's it's, it's levels to it. And a, a lot of our people don't understand these levels. And these levels are just in the script that the Most High laid down the foundation for us to follow. Mm -hmm. and, and no man and woman should be fighting over, fighting and going against each other. It's supposed to be a union. That's um, your covenant, the no. world, we against, the, it's us against the world. Ah, God. Man, so many of you join. I got, bro, I got you. I got you covered. So you're going to make me make this joint. <laughs> hey, I, I, you got to do I, I, part two. That's all, man, part two. Yeah, you got to do a part two because <laughs> I got you covered. But I got you covered, y'all. Um, uh, we're going to look at one other one because, again, you brought up um, our our um, our behavior, our mindsets being not on the right thing. We're not supposed to focus on um, the punishments, the, uh, the torments. We're supposed to focus on the righteousness. But huh. our mind is locked in, and this is a lot of what the enemy does to help us get to to help to redirect our focus away from the Father. He gets us locked in. So let's look at this uh, this other one right, right quick. All right, there's just a lot of words. I think most of them are on the screen. Some of them are, are, are off, but let's take a look. Look and listen. If I know that it's a piece of me that's still broken, and I don't trust you when you say that you're gonna stay, so I'm dipping out the same day that I know your heart is stolen. And deep down, I love it when they love me from a distance because I know they never really see the real me. All these broken pieces that I hold on to, the pain that cut me deep, and I can't stop this bleeding. And I like I'm affluent, not for the gifts, but because I know he'll never need me. And I've been figuring everything out for so long that I'm proud to say I'm strong and I'm embarrassed to feel needy. My toxic trait is that I never mean to hurt them. I really mean to fall in love. I take the time out to learn them. And I speak from my heart. I love with intention, so it ain't no way that they don't feel me. But my capacity to love is the best thing I got, so that's all I show. Because who could love the real me? And my toxic trait is that they hurt more than they hurt me when I finally say I'm leaving. And when I'm done, I really mean it. But they never believe it. Because we come from a generation of people that be saying shit they don't be meaning. And my toxic trait is I don't know if any man could ever love me fully once he finds out that we having threesomes with my depression and this anxiety is a bully. Once he find out how much that I laugh to keep from crying. And that I spend just as much time hurting as I spend smiling. And that I got addictions to spending money because the best way to cover my pain is from styling. And the only time he know how I really feel is when I'm drunk dialing. I be wildin'. And my toxic trait is that I recognize your pain. And I'm drawn to you because mine feels the same. And my toxic trait is that I love broken men because they won't never know how to tell whose is whose pieces. And I'm addicted to being the only one that ever need me. My toxic trait is that everything look perfect from the surface. But deep down, I ain't never gonna let no man know that I'm hurting. Damn. <laughs> so when we when we uh that was a lot. That was a that was a lot that she said there. Now if we take that all in. She recognizes that she has problems. She recognizes that she has some toxic ten tendencies. She recognizes that that those things are not good for the relationship. Yet she is still she's determined almost to stay in that toxicity. So if we think about our mindsets and us sinning and us having repeating sin and us doing things over and over again. We're we're constantly telling ourselves, I can't do it. Why did I do this again? We're beating ourselves up in our head, just like she was doing, just like she's expressing. But yes, she still keeps on going forward, trying to hide it. She she acknowledges it within her heart. She understands it, but she's not making moves in order to in order to change it. And again, that goes back to that part of I think it was the second estrus when it was talking about uh, those people that basically take the situation this way out for for uh, for granted. And, and, and sit up there and stay and we stay stuck. So we have to understand that Israel, just like you were saying, Q, we're much like that toxic woman. We're, we're focused on ourselves and instead of understanding his sacrifice and the way that he made for us. We're focused on us, our pain, our wrongdoing, 
and which should be acknowledged and should be healed, which should be we should, should actually absolutely be working on working through that. But the focus should be on Yahweh Shah's sacrifice and the way that he made for us. We have to follow his path. And what is his path? His path is obedience and sacrifice. So he, he's not just looking to get back into a dysfunctional family. Adam and Eve born into sin, everybody after after them born into sin. He's not looking to get into back into a dysfunctional family. Nah, later for that. He, he's looking for perfection. A perfect family, a perfect community, a perfect nation. And why? We're gonna go to we're gonna go to uh, we're gonna go to one scripture, then I then I give it to you, uh, Q. I appreciate you, King. I appreciate you. Why, why is he looking for these different things? Let's go to Matthew five and eight. Why is he looking for perfection? Matthew 5 and 48. I'm sorry, Matthew 5 and 48. I'll read it. I'll read it. This is, book, this is the book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 48. Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. We need to be perfect because his Father and our Father in the heaven is perfect. And he's not putting up, he's not, he, no dysfunction is getting into his father's kingdom. No dysfunction. So that's why his sacrifice is important and him being an intercessor for us is important. He's, he's the, he's helping us. Like we have, we have to understand, we got to get out of this, 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 uh, this mindset where it's woe is me, woe is me. He's here to help us. Yes, he's, yes, we disappoint him. Absolutely. No, he does not deserve it, but he wants us. And more importantly, he wants his father to have the family that he wants and the, and the family that his father deserves. So he's made a way. He sacrificed his place so he can absorb all the pain, Calm. All, the, Calm. all the retribution, all of the stuff that we, we deserve Calm. so that he can help us. So he, so we can achieve this perfection. That's why it's a perfecting process. So he, so we can, so he can deliver us to first of all to him, and of course to his father. He's trying to help us, but we don't focus on that. We don't focus on his sacrifice. We focus on the toxicity. I like this so much, I can't get out of it because I like it so much. I'm, 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 a, I'm, a, I'm so attracted to it. We got to get out of that mindset. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead, dog. Con, I'm not going to. This is the word of the most high. I just want to go to a particular scripture that right. ties into exactly what we're with the lesson you bring in tonight and the lesson that I wanted to go into at another time. But this is to let you know how the, the, the Holy Spirit is working one is one in the same through through you, through, through the, the prophets here. And the masses across the world because it's, a script. It all, it's all about uh, the scripture is John chapter 15. Mm -hmm. um, this is uh, basically showing how Yahweh want us to be with him, how Yahweh and Yahweh shall want us to be with him. I, I just want to read a, a, a few of the, uh, the verses just to tie in to exactly what we are speaking of tonight. This is the okay. book of John chapter 15, verse 1. I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that bear not fruit, he taketh away, and every branch that bear fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Uh -huh. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself. The sister is broken. Mm -hmm. Except it abide in the vine, no more can ye except ye abide in me. We need I it. am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye cannot do nothing. God. If a man abideth not in me, he is cast from, cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. Uh, so, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, 
and it shall be done unto you. I could go on and on and reading, but we know that we cannot do this work that, oh, oh, Mordecai spoke on it. Brother Mordecai spoke on it about uh, out of uh, Second Ezra, um, that the work that we, the, the, the our life living, the Most High has already worked it out. Mm-hmm. We just got to believe in Him. Our words have power. The sister was speaking nothing but death on her own soul uh-huh. because she's broken in pieces. She she's comfortable there. She don't know no other path. She don't know the she don't know the righteous pathway to get to God to get to the kingdom and do away with all that brokenness. Yeah. She's living in that brokenness and she loves toxicity men that are broken like her, don't have a relationship with the most high. They are broken branches. The only thing that's de- that they deserving of is death to be Literally. burned thrown in the fire. And yeah. we uh, a tree bearing a branch connected to the vine is going to bear fruit. God. And, and we have and we ha- and what happens when it bears fruit? Go ahead, go ahead and I do 8 through 10. 8 through 10. Here is my father glorified that ye bear much fruit. So shall ye be my disciples. That's yes, Yahweh Shah's whole purpose and focus that his father be glorified. Come. Go ahead, keep on reading, brother. As the father have loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. And 10. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love even as I have kept my father's commandments and abide in his love. This is a system of sacrifice and obedience. Sacrifice and obedience. We're sacrificing our flesh and the things that we want. uh, And there's a whole system and we'll talk about that next time. And we are to obey his way, obey the way, because his father is perfect and he will accept nothing less than perfect. He knows what he he knows what he is. He knows who he is. He knows what he deserves. And Yahweh Shah knows it as well. That's why Yahweh Shah ain't playing with Yah. He's not playing around. That's why blasphemy of his of the Holy Spirit, which is Yah's spirit, Yahweh Shah that's, said that's unforgivable. He does not play when it comes to his father and, and glorifying his father and his father being done right. He don't play with nobody disrespecting his father. So that's why this mission is such is such a big deal. And that's why. There's literally hell to pay if you don't take advantage of this opportunity. So Yahweh Shah is sacrificing to create this perfection, this ability to be perfect for us through him. Like you said, through that vine. So we have to get that. We, we have to understand that 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 is the grand mission. And that's what we're missing because we're too busy being like that toxic woman. That And this is what the whole law is about. Obedience and sacrifice. Uh-huh. Obedience and sacrifice. We're gonna we're gonna look at a, a couple of other things real quick just to tie it all in. Uh-huh. Cause we have to understand we have to again sacrifice of thanksgiving and understand and be thankful for this opportunity that we have that we should not have. All right. This is so fascinating. I saw this the other day with Adam and Eve. And so Adam and Eve, they're in the garden. God says, don't eat at the fruit of the tree of the, the knowledge of good and evil. Um, he gave this commandment to Adam. And then Eve goes around. She takes the fruit. She eats of it and tells Adam to eat the fruit. Adam then eats the fruit and, you know, listens to her. And so then God shows up on the scene and he doesn't call for Eve. He calls for Adam. Why does he call for Adam? Because he didn't tell Eve. He told Adam. Why did he tell Adam? He told Adam. And then Adam was supposed to tell Eve. He was supposed to be the spiritual leader, the head. And what happens is, is when the man doesn't lead and when the woman says, okay, well, if you ain't lead, I'm going to leave here. Take this fruit, eat it. I think you should do what I do. And now look what happens. So when there's that kind of imbalance in our marriage, it all falls apart. So what I'm hearing you say is that you want me to lead as a woman of God, at least. Yes. You desire your husband. Because I'm not threatened. I, I know who I am. I know who God's called me to be. And I'm not threatened by your leadership. I'm not threatened by you being the head of our family and our house. I'm not threatened by you being the king because I know I'm the queen. Wow. Wonderful. Beautiful. Let's look at one more. And again, that should be Israel's position. That should also be, also be uh, our, our men's position. And that should be our, one, our women's position. 
within Israel on a human on a human level. Let's look at this. Oh hell! They want a real man. And if you let her work and you stay home, ain't no way in hell she can honor and respect you. Because the nature of God in man is that he must provide for, maintain, and make a way for his woman and his children. But when you don't have a job, but you can make a baby, and you don't give the woman not even enough money to buy pampers. How can she honor you, respect you, and love you? She saw something in you when she laid down and gave herself to you. There's two sides. We talk about the woman a lot, but the man has a, a larger responsibility. That's what those two things, those two videos are about. A man has a larger, uh, a larger responsibility. Uh, and, um, you know, Q was talking about this, about how we have to move together. Let's take a look at this. The whole idea is yeah. that you're going to lose something so that you can gain, so that you can win Christ. Right. When you're talking about marriage, you're going to lose things in order to gain. Mm hmm the other person and people are afraid to say that mm. because they're like oh don't lose yourself right don't lose who you are yeah you know if anybody's trying to change you and make you into somebody else then that's not the person for you but and we go into it with all these preconceived notions yeah we jump into marriage then we get there and we realize man this person in order for us to do this together, I'm actually going to have to take a step back. I'm actually not going to be able to go after mm -hmm. my master's degree when I want. Yeah. Because kids are going to get in the way. Mm -hmm. When I want, because this my spouse is working 12 hour shifts. Right. And I can't go for my degree because then we won't see each other. Right. All these things get postponed and they're like, oh, don't lose yourself. Don't give up anything. Yeah. But then you're going to be able to have a successful marriage. It doesn't work. Doesn't work. And it I doesn't work. and I love how we also often tell couples that compromise doesn't mean that both parties get what they want at the exact, at the exact same time. So a lot of couples feel like, OK, I want Chinese tonight. And this is the most basic example. <laughs> Oh, but I want Chinese. Always talking about food. <laughs> I want Chinese tonight, and you want Mexican. So you know what we're gonna do? I'm gonna go get Chinese, and then you're gonna order Mexican, and then we feel like, see, I've compromised because I've let you have what you want, and I've still gotten what I want. That's actually not compromise. Compromise says, in this moment, I will not get what I want, so that you can get everything you want. But guess what? There's coming a season in our marriage where I will be getting what I want and you'll have to sacrifice. Uh, so we again, this is the this is the togetherness model. And we already talked about there being an agenda against the Israelite family. That's that's not the spirit that they want in our families and our marriages and, and within our, and within our people. Again, following that model of sacrifice, because you heard them talking about compromise. Compromise is a sacrifice. That that is the spirit that we need uh, within our marriages. That's the same spirit that Yahweh that Yah and Yahweh created us in, and, and that will be the uh, the model going forward. But we have to embed this in in our bodies. Now let's look. Let's uh, look at this one. This is this is simply beautiful right here. To be honest with you, I'm so grateful to God. I have so many in a million words to say to tell you how much I love you. But one thing I want to tell you and promise you, Miles, is I'll, I'll forever, I'll forever submit to you. I'll forever submit to you. I'll forever submit to you, Miles. I'll forever respect you, Miles. I'll forever honor you, Miles, as the head of our home and no other. There is no other, there is no one no plans of hell will ever prosper in our marriage and will ever hold me not to be a wife 
that is a Proverbs 31 woman. Amen. I will become that woman that builds the home as I follow you, as you follow Christ. Amen. That is the only thing that we will do in our household. And I promise and I vow that in heaven they hear. <laughs> On earth I declare and decree I shall be a submissive wife unto you as we continue to do this work of God. Because to us, you know, this is beyond just love. This is about God. This is about kingdom. This is about our duty, reflecting to the world what true marriage, what God really intends for marriage to be. I honor you, Miles. And I love you with my all, <laughs> with all my heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, glory, hallelujah. That's beautiful. That's a beautiful thing now. I think a lot of ladies these days will have a problem with that. They will have a problem with um, with the lady getting down on her knees. Do you think that the man thinks lowly of her for getting down on her knees? Heck no, man. No, Heck man. no. Does hey, he, he, he gonna be a he gonna be a he, he gonna be a, a, a righteous king, a, a, a lion to protect her, man? That's someone you protect. That's someone you let nothing. She goes on a pedestal. Absolutely, she's placed on a pedestal in case. <laughs> you know what Absolutely. I'm saying? Yeah. In case. Open up that mindset, that mentality. That's she probably right. don't ever have to work a day in her life. He probably work it out where she don't have to do nothing but just take care of him. And that's how it's supposed to be. But like you said, G, a lot of women are like, what? But she tripping. I'm like, what? I make more money than he do. And they're gone right there. They not like, referencing the king. They not referencing the order uh -huh. of y'all. And they got a problem with um, that, e that even that appearance of submission, the getting on the knees. And like you said, Q, no man uh, in his right mind, certainly no man of the most high is going to look at that as, oh, she's lower than me or blah, blah, blah. And that's not what it is. That's he received uh -huh. that as respect. And I'll ask I'll ask it in another way. Does your shot look down on us when we get on our knees and pray to him? Man, he loves it, man. He loves it when we come to him. For exactly. every need that we need, everything that we desire, he wants us to come to him. Even exactly. if he don't desire, no, we need. It's the act of showing reverence exactly. to him, the king, our king, our father in heaven. He exactly. wants that. He looks for that. That's all he looks for. Uh, that's what he looks for to, to give out, to give everything unto him so he can do everything that he needs to do for us. God. God, he got on he got on his knees himself when he was when he was on the earth and he was praying to his father. Huh. So again, submission is not a situation where someone looks down at you in a lowly. Uh, it's a it's an honor. It's an honor to be submitted to, and it's also a great responsibility. It's this wicked world that has people thinking that submit that submission is a is a bad thing. Or and it's because of unrighteousness. It's because of people in certain positions that do people wrong. That's what has people thinking uh, of unrighteousness and that submission means that someone's going to take advantage of you. No, if you, as the woman said, as he follows Yahweh Shai, she, he's going to lead her in the right direction. So again, it starts with we men, just like we, just like those first two. Um, we was talking when the woman was talking about the role of Adam. When Farrakhan was talking about a man being the uh, being a provider and earning that position of respect and reverence, it's all part of this whole system. It started with Yahat, with Yah's sacrifice first. Yahweh received that sacrifice and he and he understood it and he reverenced his father's sacrifice to create him. In turn, Yahweh has sacrificed first to create things for us. And create a way for us. He sacrificed himself first. You know, uh, huh. the man generally sacrifices himself first for his family. So it's hmm. a whole system of sacrifice and obedience. So next time we're gonna come back and um, we're gonna we're gonna get one closing verse. But the next time we come back, we'll talk about this system of obedience and sacrifice. Let's get um, John three. 14 through 16. It's the same one we started out with. John 3, uh, 14 through 16. John chapter 3, verse 14 through 15. Whoever wants to grab it. John 3, 14 through 15? Uh, 4 through 16, I'm sorry. Okay, this is the book of John, chapter 3, verse 14. 
And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Ah, hallelujah. So we're gonna get we go, we're gonna look to get a deeper understanding of just what that means. Hopefully we'll we'll gain some inferences from our conversation tonight because you know, a lot of times we look at this scripture and it's so um it's so misused and it's one of these scriptures that like everybody knows little but few of us truly understand it and there's an even deeper understanding than we, than what we usually have and we covered some of this before sacrifice. We'll cover some of that in this lesson. That sacrifice is not, we have to understand Yahweh Shah's sacrifice. And it's more than just, oh, he died on the cross of blood. That's that, that, that look at that um, story, the way that it's told, doesn't, doesn't give it the weight that it deserves. It does not give it the weight of everything that he's gone through. It doesn't, it doesn't give it that weight. It doesn't show how much that. He's put on the line for us and he continues to put on the line for us because he's trying his best to uh, to get us to the point where we can be received for his father. He's standing in the way like, look, not yet, not yet, not yet. He's trying to help us. But we look at it as he's trying to hurt us and stop us from doing stuff. It's, it's stupid. So we have to reframe our mindset, get out of that toxic woman mindset. So anyway. Um, we'll discuss some more next time. We'll go ahead and close out uh, with a prayer. I hope my back, Q, you got something? Yeah, I just want to say, man, that uh, just going through this lesson tonight and going forward in life, living my life, uh, it's a tragedy that Israel, their heads, the men, the kings are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because when you have a conversation with a man, um, that's a father. And no matter what he's been through, he have to be, he had to be born through it from a man. And not to have his mom, that's a tragedy. Not to have your mother and your father is a tragedy. Not having both of them together is a tragedy. Um, but also a tragedy when neither one are able to raise you up and bring you up in this truth. Yeah. To understand what the Yahweh sacrifice for us. Well, Yahweh has sacrificed, being a sacrificial lamb, and we not have a relationship enough to get into this truth to understand everything that the Most High is giving us. It's a tragedy to come under false doctrine, false teaching, um, to be uh, pulled away or lured away from these false doctrines that the enemy has portrayed to be something that he's not. And a lot of us have went have went that pathway, went that roadway. But it's also an ultimate blessing to have not experienced that or be brought out from that to receive the true truth. So the most high, he, 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 in my life, I give him thanks all the time every day because I could be dead in prison Life without him is not life at all to me. Yeah. So I, I, I just um I just want to say to uh you know Israel that I love it I, I love you Israel I love all my brothers I love all my sisters especially you, yeah. those that in this truth and those that is lost it, it just make me uh want to you know be planted deeper in this truth and be able to speak the truth to them to help bring them out of darkness into the light because. You know, um, this word is beautiful, man. I see it so. Mo I see it so beautiful. I, I have. I see it in a different light now. And um, I just want to say that you know, uh, if, if you know, if you think you know Yahweh, you think you know Yahweh Shai. Um, I could just say uh, John chapter fourteen verse fifteen. If you love him, keep his commandments. Uh, and the most high will do the rest. It's already worked out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Come on to a beautiful yeah. teaching like Awaken Israel give every Thursday. <laughs> and, uh, and, and like the masses, we love our people. And that's it. That's all. I do our part. Hey, Brian, 
you want to, uh-huh. um, you, you seem like you're feeling it right now. You want to close out with a prayer? Wanna sure, start? I can do that. Sure, I can do that. I can do that. Uh, right. Thank you, Father, for bringing us again together once again tonight that we uh, we dove into your word. We we, we we relish your word. We we love your word. We love everything about you, Father. We thank you for having us to be alive today. We thank you that uh, you, you just cover us and keep us and put a hedge of protection around our family, our loved ones, those that's not open into this truth that we pray that you open them up, you you turn the light bulb on for them to see what we see and to be activated to uh, spread the gospel, spread the love that you have. If you don't love your brother, you, you, there's, there's, there's definitely you don't love, they don't love you, Father. We know this. So we we ask that um, you just repent, ask for forgiveness and get to him, get to the word, get to your and and get, and get get to understand and know who you are as a king, who you are as a princess of the most high. And Father, I ask that you uh I pray I we pray for our our leaders to lead us out of darkness into the light. Yes, um cleaving to them, Father, cleaving to everyone that's cleaved to you as the, the branch, as divine, to your divineness, Father God. We thank you today. We thank you uh for everything that you've done for us. I ask that you cover all of Israel, um, awaken all of Israel, Father, that 144 come, and so your kingdom come, and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We thank you, Father, um, those that have not, that did not make it to the uh, panel this, this evening, we ask that you cover them, protect them, lead them, guide them, Father God. Let us not lean to our own understanding, but every word of you, Father. We thank you again. Continue to give us health and strength to carry on in your truth. Thank you for your laws and commandments that it, 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 uh, it governs us. It governs me to be all that we can be in you. Thank you, Father God. May you uh, continue to uh, get all the honor and all the glory. And Yahweh, Shai Hamashia Basham name. In your name we praise always, forever. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Great prayer, dog. Great prayer, dog. Come on. Come on. Amen. Amen. Well, here we Appreciate y'all. And um, hey, we'll do this again. Um, Next time, all right? Thank y'all so much. Shalom, 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 shalom,